Welcome to a new segment called Dollar Bin Diving, where I dive into the dirtiest, raunchiest dollar bins and I find gold for a dollar. Let's go! Okay, people, let's do this one more time. My name is Ramsey. I'm a comic store owner. I organize conventions. I'm in a band and I'm a lifelong pop culture fan. And I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by it every day of my life. Welcome to Ramsey vs. Comics. All right, so maybe they're not that dirty and raunchy, it's just dollar bins, but I love digging. I love looking through long boxes, trying to find that, you know, diamond in the rough. And sometimes they're pretty rough, and sometimes I do find diamonds. So, okay, this whole stack, I got a hundred books, and all of these were less than a dollar. These were 60 cents each if I took a hundred, so I had about 60. I was like, man, I might as well get the other 40. They're free. Oh, wow. And uh, there's some... Okay, there's some stuff that is just absolutely stupid to buy, uh, like a one in a million spec, but a key, nonetheless, for a dollar, I couldn't resist. So, okay, bear with me. Uh, let's see what we got. All right, so first book on this stack is Night Stalkers number one from Rise of the Midnight Suns. Now that Marvel is venturing into the, the whole dark magic aspect, I think uh, all these Rise of the Midnight Suns have potential to eventually go up and hey, it was a dollar. If it doesn't go up, psh, I chuck it, right? All right, so next on the stack is Ghost Rider number one. I believe this was a 2006 series with uh, Mark Texera, Texira, Texera, Tex, um, Mark Tex, and written by Daniel Way. It's a number one, uh, I, they had like 10 of these in there. And I was like, ah, what the heck, you know? I don't know if there's any first appearances in it. Uh, I haven't checked that far. But a number one Ghost Rider for a dollar. And they all seem to be in, in absolutely great condition. At least 9.6. Uh, probably a few 9.8s in here. So for a dollar, can't go wrong. All right. And then I found an America number 11. I think this is second to the last issue of her original 12-issue uh, miniseries. Uh, probably a low print run so I figured for a dollar might as well pick it up then I also found a Call of Duty Black Ops 3 number one written by Larry Hama gotta have me some Larry Hama love Larry Hama if you haven't read his G.I. Joe stuff you need to he was great on Wolverine uh, I'm gonna have him at my Comic Con soon he was supposed to come in 2020 and unfortunately the pandemic hit but I'm hoping we have him for 2021 assuming his schedule is clear alright then I also found this bullseye Number one variant cover. That looks pretty cool. Daredevil there uh, with a Chinese star and a, a card uh, through his face. It was it said variant cover. I figured, hey, I don't know if there's a 1 in 10, 1 in 20. It does have some uh, color rub uh, right there. Uh, but hey, a dollar, hey, maybe if I can flip it for two, I doubled my money. Next on the list is Young X-Men number one and a number seven zombie variant. I don't know if this these are our first appearances of these characters or not, but it was a dollar! Mm, 60 cents actually! 60 damn cents! Gonna do it. I had to get it. Next up is weird, wired, word? I don't know <laughs> what it is, but it was a spec book several months ago according to the Key Collector app. I believe it said that there was uh, some kind of show uh, maybe in production or it was picked up uh, potentially for a pilot. Uh, I don't know, but this issue is 25 bucks right here. $25 issue and I have one, two, three of these that are 25 bucks. So this more than these three more than paid for this whole stack of comics. So I'm pretty excited. These ones here, I think, are 12 bucks. Hopefully the show is cool, and this still has some upside to it. Maybe when the trailer drops, I'll be selling these and cashing in on this dollar bin dive. All right, so moving on, we have Champions Outlawed. So uh, this is the first appearance of uh, one of those uh, acronym, uh, I guess, government entities. This one's called Cradle. Cradle, because they're kids. In suits stupid but guess what first appearance of cradle maybe at some point well we know a lot of these guys are gonna make it into the MCU uh, already especially Kamala Khan uh, Nova is coming according to uh, Kevin Feige so maybe at some point cradle 
will make its debut with all these young kids with superpowers running around and I'll be able to cash in my two bucks for maybe like 10 bucks. Who knows? Maybe 20, maybe 30. Maybe with comic prices being what they are, maybe I'll get 100 bucks. Who knows? All right, so there's a Blue Beetle movie in the works and I found all these. I found, what is it, six Blue Beetle number ones. It's not his first appearance. His first appearance was in Infinite Crisis number five, I think. Five? I'll, I'll put, the, if, I'll put the, the right one right here. Um, so, hey, uh, 60 cents, worth a spec, I'm sure, his, I, I don't know, if, I don't even know if it's his first solo outing or not, but it's a Blue Beetle number one, it was 60 cents each, it was worth it. Here's one I've always wanted to read, this is Marvel Comics number one, I believe this is a reprint of those books from back in the day, look at that. I'll probably never afford the original, nor would I want to open it up if I did have it. So for a buck, I get to read Marvel Comics number one when it was printed by Timely, or maybe they had just turned to Marvel Comics, or maybe they called it Marvel Comics and it sold so well that they said, we're going to call our whole line Marvel Comics instead of Timely. I don't know. Something like that. All right, so here's a recent spec uh, that just came on our radar. It's been picked up by Netflix. It's called Mystery Girl. And I was able to get, let me see, how many copies is this? Three copies of number one. Um, two copies of number two, one copy of number three, and four copies of number four. So I got the alert on my Key Collector app a few days ago, maybe a week ago, about this, and then I just happened to be digging through a dollar bin today, and I found them, and right now I want to say their number ones are going for about 20 bucks, and who knows, maybe there's some first appearances in issue two, three, or four, or some kind of important story plot that we'll see in the Netflix show, and maybe then we'll see some heat on the rest of the issues. Here's some fantastic four issue number ones that I found from the most recent series. Uh, five issues. It is. It does have a couple first appearances. I don't remember who they are. I have not read this. Uh, Dan Slot, so it should be pretty good. Yeah, I don't know who appears in here, but uh, maybe with the movie, they'll be looking towards uh, this series and maybe some characters in there. Uh, it's a long shot, but 60 cents each. Ching, 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 motherfucker. With the Skrulls playing a bigger role in the MCU and a Secret Invasion series in the works from Disney Plus, these, for 60 cents each, are a steal. This is the Skull, uh, Skull, <laughs> Skrull Kill Crew. Are they gonna appear? Who knows? I don't know. But Meet the Skrulls for sure is going up. I wanna say about $12 is what this issue is worth. 24 bucks in my hand for 60 cents each. You can't beat that. I didn't even rhyme, I'm sorry. Terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, so here is Killmonger number one. This has the origin of Killmonger for a dollar. Can't beat it, can't beat it, can't beat it. All right, this is Strike Force number one. Is it important? Probably not. It had a cool Winter Soldier cover, and I just saw Falcon and Winter Soldier first episode, and it was great, and it released last night at two in the morning. I couldn't stay up that long. So I woke up in the morning, watched it, it was good, and this had him on the cover, and this has him teaming up with Blade, and then there's a satanic star in the back. I couldn't pass it up for 60 cents. No, sir, or ma'am, or whoever's watching. I couldn't pass it up, 60 cents, $1.20. And look, it continues back there with Young Bucky. So this is a really cool cover, actually. Let's look at that. Old Bucky, older Bucky, and Young Bucky. Uh, Wraparound cover, it's the Immortal variant. Anyway, eh, 60 cents, probably not spent very well, but just because I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier and I liked it, uh, that was good enough reason to pick it up. Okay, so here is World of Warcraft number one. This is a Jim Lee cover. I think, I think this is going for some, some cash and it, for 60 cents, let's find out. It's not necessarily a 9.8. I see a few ticks, but definitely possibly a 9.6. Let's find out. Comic Book Realm has it at about $12 for this, so I paid 60 cents, definitely a plus. I'm in the black, I'm in the green. All right, so one of my favorite characters and one of my favorite, f so I love it so much I can't even talk. One of my favorite runs is uh, the Abnet and Lanning Nova right after Annihilation, which I suspect is gonna come to the MCU sooner than later. 
um, which was a great storyline uh, set in space. Abnett and Landing are responsible for the version of Guardians of the Galaxy that you know from the MCU. Such a great run. I definitely think you should go pick it up. So Nova has all the Nova pro powers. Uh, the Annihilation Wave annihilated Nova Prime, or whatever the planet, I forget what the planet's called, man, I know it. Anyway, annihilated all the other Novas. He has the power of all the Novas, and he's just going 24-7 hard to save everybody that he possibly can, and he's wearing himself out. This is such a great, great, great storyline. This is issue two and three for 60 cents. Couldn't pass it up. I think when we do see Nova, it's going to be probably from this storyline here, since they, that's where they picked up from Guardians of the Galaxy, the Abnett and Landing run. Definitely, I think they're going to follow in those same footsteps with Nova. Speaking of Abnett and Landing and Annihilation, uh, here's a Star Lord Annihilation Conquest and Annihilation Conquest prologue. Uh, this one featuring Philavel, who I believe is probably going to come to the Guardians of the Galaxy at some point. Uh, she is the daughter of Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel, the dude, but they can just as easily make Marvel, the female version, her mom, and still keep those ties. So I think she's going to come at some point. Uh, she'll probably have the Nega Bands uh, with her. So, or, or does she have the quantum bands? No, I think Quasar has a quantum band. I don't know. One of those bands. She's going to come over at some point over to the MCU. Uh, be on the lookout for her first appearance also in uh, Captain Marvel as well. But it wasn't the current Captain Marvel. It was the dude Captain Marvel. But that happened to be the son of Marvel, Captain Marvel. Not Marvel. Whatever. Not Carol Danvers' son, but whatever. So, uh, Philobel. And, of course, Star-Lord in the Conquest. This is before, um, or maybe right after, uh, he joined the Guardians of the Galaxy. Probably right before. And here is issue one of the Annihilators. So it's a team, again, Abnett and Lanning. These writers are amazing, and I wish they would come back and write more space stories for Marvel. Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. So anyway, the Annihilators is this team right here. It consists of Quasar, Beta Ray Bill... Who else have we got there? Silver Surfer, of course. Gladiator. Ronan. But there are the Annihilators. This is issue one. Can't go wrong. At some point, the Annihilators are coming to the MCU. It might be a long, 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 long time from now, but I'm going to cash out my 60 cents uh, for probably, I don't know, 50 bucks. I'm, I'm assuming. All right, guys. So here is another cool one. So I remember picking this up uh, back in the 90s or early 2000s. It's called Melting Pot Number 1 from uh, creator of the Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman, and one of my favorite painters, uh, Simon Beasley. He is, uh, I, I guess if you ever saw the first Lobo miniseries, man, his art was so awesome on there. Instantly fell in love. Then I followed him to, I think, Batman Judge Dredd. Had a little prestige book that was uh, all painted by him. Well, this one is artwork by Kevin Eastman and then painted by uh, Simon Beasley. And look at this, man. Evil, crazy, fantasy, warlord-looking dudes. And that's, that's, that's my, that, that floats my boat. It really does. What does that mean, floating my boat? You ever had your boat floated? All right. Now, here is my stupid expenditure uh, for the day. X-Factor number 96. So this is the first appearance of uh, a character named Haven. Why did I spec on this? Because they had a bunch of them, and they were cheap, and it's her first appearance, and who knows? I, I, I don't remember. I, I read this back in the day. I don't remember anything about her or what happens, but it is a first appearance. So imagine if Haven comes out in the MCU. Man, you know, uh, usually uh, the first appearance of somebody in the MCU, at least 50 bucks, even if it's a new comic that just came out. 50 bucks. Imagine 50 bucks times 20 or 30, however many I picked up. I'd be rich! Not really. And it's a super slim chance. Don't go out and buy a bunch of uh, X-Factor 96s. Chances are it's not going to happen, but one can dream, right? So here's a comic that I always wanted to check out. It's called uh, Great Pacific, number one, from Image. Uh, I think back in, like, in 2011, 2012. Uh, I always wanted to read it. Never had a chance to. It's about, I think, a kid who is, like, I don't know, king of his uh, uh, little island. But his little island happens to be the, the, the Great Pacific garbage patch. So anyway, I'm going to read it. There was two different covers available. Whoa, where's the other one? There we go. Nope, that's not it either. There we go. So there was two different covers. I was able to get four total, two of each cover. 
and we'll see if it's good. All right, and then I got Hit Monkey number one. Is this his first appearance? I'm not too sure. Uh, there was two number ones. One of them is his first appearance. One of them is not. Written by Daniel Way. Hit Monkey was awesome. And there was, uh, right before the pandemic, talk about him getting his own series or something. Uh, maybe, I don't know, animated or maybe brought into the MCU. But Hit Monkey, he's a monkey hitman. Yes, it's great. It's great. Go read it. Galactus the Devourer, number, number two. I mean, anything with Galactus in the title, I'm gonna get. I'm a huge Marvel cosmic fan. Anything with Galactus in there. And then he's fighting. Who's he fighting? Uh, I forgot that guy's name. Uh, uh, it's gonna come to me. No, it's not. And then Silver Surfer. Can't go wrong. 60 cents. 60 cents. 60 cents, guys. Can't go wrong. This is not hoarding. It's collecting. Collecting. Speaking of just watching uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, guess who made a cameo there at the end? Oh, spoiler. Uh, if you haven't seen it by now, too bad. It's probably a few days before I even get this up and edited. Uh, it is U.S. Agent uh, John Walker as Captain America. Is this the same dude? Is this John Walker? I don't know, but they were 60 cents, and it's a number one. It didn't come out too long ago, and Christopher Priest is writing. Yeah, I'm definitely reading. Here's another cool one. It's called My Name is Bruce, and it's about Bruce Campbell. Campbell. Bruce Campbell. And, you know, I do I want to read it? Of course. Who doesn't love Bruce Campbell? All right, and the last one on this stack of 100 comics, thanks for sticking around, is Invincible Iron Man number three. This is when Riri Williams took on the mantle of Invincible Iron Man. It's number three, and I want to say it's a first appearance, but I can't recall. Let me look it up real quick. Oh, yes, 15 bucks, and it's... First in-story appearance of Riri in red and gold Iron Man, Ironheart armor, Ironheart armor model number two. Tony Stark suggests the name Ironheart. 60 cents, and it's worth how much? 15 bucks. Man, you know, I could sell a few of these comics and more than pay for this whole stack that cost me 60 bucks. He didn't even charge me tax. So I'm telling you guys, you have to get down and dirty and dig into those dollar bins. There's gold to be found. There's gold. Get out to your local LCS and don't even stop there. Travel. I, I, I drive for 100, 200, 300 miles to check out comic stores and dig their dollar boxes because there's good stuff in there. There's good stuff if you know your stuff. Study, shop, and get rich. Yeah. Probably not. All right, guys, let me know what you have found. What is the best thing you found inside a dollar bin? Let me know in the comments down below. And you could win a bequest number one, one in 15 variant. This has some cool art. It almost looks almost McFarlane-y uh, as far as the, the level of detail. Let me find a good uh, thing in there for you to see. Let it focus in there. Comment down below. Let me know what you found in dollar bins. What is the coolest thing you found in dollar bins? Whether it was worth money or just something from your childhood. Let me know below and you could win this.